Armin Arler is a major character in Attack on Titan and Eren's childhood friend. He's the one who eventually stops Eren's rumbling and leads the world to peace. Many of the series' mysteries were explained in the final chapter of Attack on Titan, such as the cause of Mikasa's headache. But did you know that there are still many mysteries about Armin that have not been explained even now that the story is complete? In this video, we'll thoroughly discuss the mysteries around Armin. We also have other videos on this channel that can deepen your understanding of Attack on Titan. So if there's anything else you want to know about, please be sure to check those out as well. Armin's Parents The biggest mystery about Armin is about his parents and grandfather. In Chapter 15 of Volume 4, Armin says that his parents died in the monarchy's hopeless campaign to recapture Wall Maria. But in the anime, Armin's parents were shot when they were spotted by the military police while trying to make a balloon to fly outside the wall. Also, the Attack on Titan character directory shows the faces of Armin's parents. Here, they were killed when they were trying to fly the balloon, not when they were making it, by members of the military police. I understand that the settings of the anime usually change a little from the manga, but the character directory and the manga not matching up is kind of weird, isn't it? The cause of Armin's parents' death isn't clear, but I think it's best to say they were shot when they were trying to fly the balloon outside the wall, like it says in the character directory. If so, Armin was wrong about how his parents died. Armin's Grandfather in Attack on Titan, humans living in the walls were punished for having any interest in the outside world. Under these circumstances, Armin's grandfather had hidden a book containing information about what was going on outside. Armin and Eren were fascinated by the book's descriptions of the sea, water that glows like fire, fields of ice, and so on, which led them to develop a strong interest in the world outside the walls. This book probably played a very important role in Attack on Titan. So, why did Armin's grandfather have this book? When the 145th King Fritz moved his people to Parody Island, he changed their memories and probably erased all information about anything outside the walls. That makes it strange that Armin's grandfather had information about the outside world, doesn't it? There are two possible reasons why Armin's grandfather had this book. Possibility 1. It was passed down in the Artlert family for generations. The first reason why Armin's grandfather could have had a book with information about the outside world is that the Artlert family was an ethnic minority unaffected by the founding Titan's power. King Fritz's memory alteration took place more than 100 years before the time of Eren and Armin's childhood. Even Armin's grandfather wasn't old enough to know what happened 100 years ago. So, this book was passed down from generation to generation in the Artler family, and Armin's ancestors couldn't have their memories tampered with. In Chapter 65 of Volume 16, Kenny Ackerman's grandfather says that the king could only change your memories and make you forget the past if you were part of the racial majority. He also said that there were several minority groups that weren't influenced by the Titan's power. The Ackerman family, including Mikasa and Levi, are one of these minorities. But if Armin and the Artler family were also one, that would explain why Armin's grandfather had a book about the outside world. Possibility number two, Armin's grandfather is from outside the wall. Aaron's father, Grisha, came to Paradis from outside and had information about the world beyond the walls hidden in his basement. This leads me to the second theory that Armin's grandfather could have also come from outside the wall and brought the book with him when he came. If Armin's grandfather was from outside, that would explain why he had the book since his parents wouldn't have been there when King Fritz the 145th altered everyone's memories. As for why Armin's parents wanted to go outside the wall using a balloon, if Armin's grandfather had told them that there were humans outside the wall, then it would make sense. However, it's highly unlikely that Armin's grandfather was from outside the wall. Grisha, Reiner, Bertolt, Annie, and Ymir all managed to make it to the walls from outside, but they were all heirs to the Nine Titans. Given the huge number of Titans outside the wall at the time, it would have been nearly impossible for Armin's grandfather to make it to the walls as a human. The theory that the Artler family's ancestors were from the Tiber family. The Tiber family is a former noble family of the Eldian Empire that conspired with the 145th King Fritz 
efforts to cause the Titan War. After the Titan War, the Eldian Empire collapsed, and Carl Fritz moved to the island of Parody with the Eldians who followed him. The remaining Eldians on the continent fell under the control of Marley. All of those Eldians were sent to live in camps. But the Tiber family was granted a large private estate by Marley for their work in the Titan War, and Marley is now under the control of the Tiber family. People think that Armin and the rest of the Artler family are descendants of the Tiber family because Armin is the narrator of the anime and because Armin and Willy Tiber have a lot in common. The first episode of the anime begins with the narration, On that day, mankind remembered the fear of oppression under them and the humiliation of being caged like birds. This is Armin's line. In most anime, the narration is done by the main character, so people wondered why it was Armin that was narrating. This led people to believe that Attack on Titan itself was a story recorded by Armin, and that Armin was a member of the Tiber family, because they were the ones who wrote the history of the Titan War. But Isayama Sensei would later tell us in an interview why the narrator was Armin. He said he was chosen because the animation director suggested it to him, and he agreed to it. There was no deeper meaning. However, Armin's narration plays an important role in connecting the last chapter of the manga to the first one. Another reason why people thought Armin was a Tiber is that Armin and Willy Tiber had a lot in common. Armin has had a brilliant mind since the beginning of the series. He was a valuable asset to the scouts when he discovered that the female Titan was actually Annie and that Reiner was hiding inside the wall during the recapture of Wall Maria. It was clear that Willy, the head of the Tiber family, who appeared in Volume 24, Chapter 97, was also very intelligent from his conversation with Marley's superior, Magath. This high intelligence could have been hereditary. Armin and Willy have more in common than just their intelligence, though. They also look alike with very similar noses, and both have blonde hair. Of course, it's possible that Isayama-sensei drew Willy without intentionally trying to make him similar to Armin. But with all the foreshadowing in Attack on Titan, people would naturally think that it must have been done on purpose. There was no explanation in the story for why Armin and Willy have these things in common. But when we saw Armin in Titan form, we noticed something interesting about the Artlert and Tiber families. The reason why Armin's Titan form doesn't have ears. In Volume 26, Chapter 104, Armin's Titan form makes its first appearance, and readers were talking about how different it was from the Titan form of his predecessor, Bertolt. Compared to Bertolt, Armin's Titan was thinner, and its ribs were visible. The reason for this is thought to be due to the difference in physical ability between Armin and Bertolt. Armin had so little confidence in his physical strength, he said it was a miracle he was able to graduate from the cadets. Bertolt, on the other hand, ranked third when he graduated from the cadets. And Reiner said that he was actually more skilled than everyone else. Since the powers of the Nine Titans can vary greatly depending on who inherits them, it's possible that Armin's Colossal Titan was weaker than Bertolt's Colossal Titan. There's another difference between Armin's Titan and Bertolt's Titan besides their physiques. Armin's Titan form doesn't have ears. If you check the ears of the Titans in Attack on Titan, you'll see there are three kinds. Pointed ears, round ears, and earless Titans. Some Titans with pointed ears are Aaron, Zeke, and Grisha's Titan forms. And some round-eared Titans are Bertolt, Reiner, and Frida's Titan forms. Finally, some earless Titans are Armin and Laura Tiber from the Tiber family. It's interesting that these are the two that don't have ears. In fact, there's been discussion for a long time about how the shape of a titan's ears could have something to do with their bloodlines. We can't say for sure that this theory is correct though, since Ymir's jaw titan also had pointed ears, and the Rice family and Reiner have similar ears too. However, it's possible that Eldians that have the same ears when they transform into titans have the same distant ancestors. If the shape of a titan's ears is related to their genetics, then Armin's ancestors would be connected to the Tiber family. That would make the Artlerts a very special family among the Eldians. 
since there are three types though, my personal theory is it might have something to do with Ymir's three daughters, Maria, Rose, and Sina, who had the walls named after them. There are still many other mysteries about Armin that haven't been explained even now that the story is complete. Let's hope that the truths will be revealed in some way in the future. If you have any thoughts to add, please feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again in the next video.